and I've been doing design-based research for about the last six years. And in particular, one of, one of the things that have been central in my work is thinking about, um, I kind of started this in, in, in more of an instructional design space. And a lot of what I started in doing there was thinking about, okay, how can I design these products such that they have, bring about rich uh, learning in the classroom. And so we did a lot of work in a virtual solar system project in which we went in and we tried to kind of iterate the tools that we were developing such that kids had richer understandings of astronomical phenomena such as line of nodes, um, plane of the ecliptic. And what, with that work, what we were able to do is I think we were able to iterate the software uh, to a form that was more useful for teachers. Um, but more importantly, uh, or what started to become more importantly to me, was that we were starting to use our examination of the classroom around which the software was being used to start to develop theory about the relationship in that case of kind of concepts and embodiment in rich practices. And so what does it mean as students are starting to build their understandings as opposed to be told their understandings by the professor? And what does it mean? How do different tasks come to interplay? And what is the role of students in motivating people? What is the role of the teacher? What is the role of the activity? And so we started to build theory around the tool. And as we started to make iterations to the tool, we started to um, think about those iterations in terms of the theory that we were building instead of just thinking about what is the outcomes we wanted. So this idea of kind of theoretically inspired innovation um, or iterations of an innovation became central in our work. Uh, so what, what that kind of evolved into, at the same time, I think the field was starting to struggle with Ann Brown's 1992 notion of design experiment and what that meant um, in, in other people's work. And so I started to give some ideas about, you know, give some thinking into what, 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 is, what work would design experiment do for me? And when, when I initially got to Indiana University, I was more of an educational psychologist. Uh, that's how I was trained. That was how I thought of things. Uh, I was very much trained as an ecological cognition or an e ecological psychologist as well. And so there was this view that I want to understand mind and cognition, but I want to do so in context. And I wanted to kind of develop articulations about the process that included both the materials of which people were interacting and the social interactions they were having and the tasks that they were using as well as their take and their um, you know, thinking in relation or with these tools. So there were the, kind of initially there was this fundamental commitment to understanding both individuals but more importantly individuals in context. And in trying to do that there weren't a lot of methodologies that allowed me to gain data, um, trained more as an educational psychologist and or a cognitive scientist, to gain um, data in a way that would allow me to make methodological claims about what people do in context. So this kind of enlisting the natural context mm -hmm. into my work was both uh, theore was theoretically consistent, but was methodologically challenging. And so for me, what that meant was I needed to think about a new sort of toolkit. And the other part of it was that I wasn't simply, how do I say this, I wasn't content with developing theory based on how the world was revealing itself to me. I thought that there could be more that could be asked of classrooms, there could be more that could be asked of kids and their thinking, there could be more opportunities, uh, certainly than they were getting in schools, um, maybe not more than they were doing outside of schools because kids, as I was observing kids, I was realizing the complexity of which they interact and they learn with materials. So they might have, you know, an IM open, um, <laughs> while they're typing on their computer, while they're reading an assignment and listening to a Walkman and, you know, communicating on the phone. And so there's this real kind of distribution of their, their resources and their attention and they're able to assemble these in ways that uh, weren't consistent with when the teacher kind of laid out what you're supposed to do and you had this one task in classroom. Additionally, a lot of the assignments that I was seeing in the schools that I was going to weren't the kind of I um, weren't using the types of curricular th tasks and activities and curricular framing that I thought would make the the content come alive to students. So I, I was in this uh, in, in this issue of, of two things: one of wanting to look at cognition in naturalistic context, and wanting to look at cognition in contexts that weren't happening yet. And so there was this weird weird place of, of kind of yeah, I mean a lot of speculation is, is what it would do. And so there was a lot of theoretical claims, and I spent a lot of time writing these kind of theoretically rich papers, and then some of my work initially then involved doing this research in which, you know, kids were making mouse clicks in a 
um, on a web environment, you know, in a hypertext environment, and I was collecting data about log files where I would randomly assign people to different conditions to make claims. And so, like, there was this disjoint between the theoretical kind of aspirations and visioning and the empirical work I was doing. So the solar system kind of started that idea of looking in the classroom, started the idea of evolving a tool to create more potentials for learning. But most of that initial work was around evolving that tool. And, and so in that process, uh, somewhere around there, there was this idea that, wow, this tool is actually, the outcomes are necessary. If I'm not bringing about impact, it's hard to make claims. But it's really, the tool is a tool for me to make kind of to have larger theoretical insights and maybe even make some empirical claims about knowing and learning in, in the digital age, uh, which is how it started to evolve. So w what that meant for me at that point was to start to think about kind of methodology much more rigorously and how I can, um, you know, what are the warrants I could obtain to make these claims about contexts that I was creating, right, mm -hmm. which is a real confound. And then and, and additionally to me creating it that we're, you know, had all these variables going on. So that's really where I stumbled into this idea of design-based research because for me as a learning scientist, it became the kind of tool that I could uh, grasp in order to make sense of context, um, or to make sense of learning within context at the same time, changing those contexts such that they could be uh, more representative of what I thought could be, not just what I thought was happening. So for me, the, the initial kind of take on what design-based research was, it was this idea that one uh, has some sort of theoretical inspiration, uh, designs, uses that to inform the design of a product. Uh, and because my work in particular sits at this kind of, um, kind of innovation threshold, uh, a lot of times my initial theoretical, every time, my initial theoretical kind of appreciation of what the thing was, i.e. community, um, or i.e. you know, academic play spaces, um, in my mind was, and, and, and my kind of initial envisioning of how that might inform a design were very different than how it played out over the next couple of years. So there was this, naive, there was this kind of rich theory and naivety, with naivete with respect to what that would mean in practice. So, as it, so what I would do is, I, the first part would be to get my theory down, get some of the assumptions down, and think about how can this inform some design work? What would a design that was consistent with these assumptions look like? Uh, and then it would involve doing some design work, going out and practice, looking at the effect of this design work, and then tweaking the design in a way that was both to bring about more effect at the same time, it was a theoretically inspired tweak, right? So it wasn't just about how can this product have impact, it was how can I theoretically do something to this product that would have impact such that I can make claims about that it was a theoretically inspired innovation that brought about this change. So I could have these kind of warrants for what I was doing.